David, I'd really like to give you the opportunity just to begin with sharing your background, kind of uh, what made you a contrarian and also kind of what what does it mean to be a contrarian? That's kind of a common question that I get asked a lot. Sure. Um, I I came to contrarian investing fairly early in my career. I started back in 1973 in a bank in Indiana. And um, I don't know, within the first uh, two or three years, I think I naturally gravitated towards it as I realized psychology was a big part of um, market uh, movement. And um, I think I also kind of have a natural contrarian. What contrarians are typically uh, people willing to go against the crowd, whether that be in investing or in other, you know, areas of life where, you you know, you're, you're just not, feeling like you have to be with the the crowd on on opinion or on thoughts um, it's particularly uh, mentioned a lot around investing because psychology does play a part in in markets and markets tend to be driven by crowd behavior and mm -hmm. then you know and then when the crowd gets too uh, involved in something it can go the other way so um, you yeah, know I've been a life I mean, certainly a career long contrarian and having done it through several cycles, I'm, I'm very comfortable being uh, holding opinions that are very much outside the consensus. And that's, that's basically what a contrarian does. Okay, so I'm curious, um, contrarian investing is really nothing new. Like if you look in the past, there's David Dremen, I believe, who came kind of before you. Do you think it's kind of on the fringe that it'll always kind of be on the fringe in terms of it's so just unique to the world of investing that it's never going to really become kind of a mainstream adoption or do you think it it could actually grow to be more popular than it is today yeah i it's it's actually quite popular now it is as you say almost by definition it's never going to be the mainstream because when everybody says they're a contrarian when everybody decides they're a contrarian that's when your your contrarianism is con consensus so a lot of people claim to be contrarians mm -hmm. I my experience over all my career is that very few really understand how to practice it or can follow through and be a true contrarian. Because the time when contrarians are really tested is when markets are going against um, you. The crowd is very much in charge. You know, I, I'd say gold and silver right now, and most people can't be in that uncomfortable place where the market's going against them. The crowd is saying you're crazy. Um, you know, all the obviously the crowd's not there for no reason. The evidence, certainly the tape, uh, is pointing against you. So it it always will, I think, be a much smaller component of investing or a smaller group. Um, but just be, you know, lots of people today, it's almost in vogue to claim you're a contrarian. And I find a lot of those that claim it aren't really contrarians when push comes to shove. Um, as for you know, David Dreamin, I read his book back in 1977 when his first edition came out. Um, and I was contrarian probably before I read his book, but that was kind of, I think we started along that line pretty much along the same time frame. Um, and, but his book, I, to this day, you know, he's passed away. Um, but to this day, when people say, do you have any books to recommend? That's probably the one at the top of the list that I tell people, you know, there's several editions beyond the 1977 initial edition but they all are pretty much along that same line and i i tell people it's it's a very good place to start if you're trying to figure out investing okay so that would be a good book recommendation for anybody really watching this who wants to learn more i've also read that book and it's really influenced me i would i would also ask you david do you think it's almost more that you're kind of born with this mindset and then it's really hard to teach a contrarian investing mindset or would you say it's kind of in between that it is something you can learn or what would you say regarding that yeah i think you can learn some of it um it really does help when you have a natural tendency in that direction and i certainly do um so it's again it's it people i think unless you really get there it's not easy uh for most people to um, go against the crowd. I, my my observations over forty eight years is it's human nature 
to want to be with the group. And being outside the group makes, makes you feel uncomfortable or lonely for, for kind of lifelong contrarians or, or people who are kind of born with that trait. Um, it's not very difficult. You know, they're, they're used to being, um, uh, if thinking differently than the crowd and, and not feeling uncomfortable doing so. Okay, so I think you've termed the kind of sentiment as kind of a wall of worry that the market needs to climb over before you would say that it's close to a top. Like, I'm just wondering, like, why is it that having sentiment at such a low point, even though we've had roughly a 100% run in the last, you know, 16 months, why is that so bullish to have sentiment being so, you know, people being so skeptical of where we are right now? Sure. Because, and, and this is important, um, people look at markets and most people kind of look at markets based on what's behind them. So if, if you pay attention to forecasters out there, economic forecasters, market forecasters, more often than not, they are extrapolating from the past into the future, right? Um, that works when you're in a, you know, kind of a steady move up or if you're forecasting down or the steady move down. But using a rear view mirror to forecast means if you come to curves, you're gonna go off the road. So my, my message always is look forward, not backwards. That you know, what's past is not necessarily prologue to the future. Um, that being said, it can be you know, when, when you're in a major move. Um, so um, you, know, you just have to kind of um, kind of adjust to where you're at and look forward. Wall of worry uh, is kind of a, a cliche on Wall Street to to describe the fact that markets, that, you know, the saying is markets climb walls of worry. The reason for that saying is that when people are um, cautious, they've probably acted on that caution, or if they're bearish, they've acted on that bearishness and they hold cash or they're less aggressive in the market. And, and as that means that's future buying power. You know, that's, if, if you're out of the market or partially out of the market because you're worried that the market's gone too far, that means that going forward, there's extra buying power out there. If everybody is bullish, they've already acted on that bullishness and so there's not a lot of extra runway ahead or buying power ahead. So wall of worry is usually, uh, you know, it's looked upon as um, fuel for the future. Um, so, you know, the trick in that is not a black and white thing. The trick in that is, first of all, judging how skeptical investors are. Um, and, and, you know, a wall of worry can get bigger. So if you're in a, a market that's rolling over and you say, yeah, but you know, there, there are some people out there worried. Well, if people get more worried, they're going to act on that. And you're going to see the market go down before it goes up. So, so it's not a, it's no, nowhere near an exact science, but generally that's the thought behind wall of worry is that that means there's kind of pent up demand going forward at some point. For sure. Yeah, that kind of ties in with what you were saying about, everybody wanting to be a contrarian and now everybody kind of believing in some way that the markets are topping out right now, or they've been thinking that for a while now. And you're saying that that in and of itself leads to there being more fuel that can be added later on. Um, I'm curious. Yeah, that's a good point yeah, because um, the very fact that everybody's looking for a top tell, means the top's probably not nearby because they're, you know, as, as I like to say, there's, they have one foot out the door. You know, they're, yes, they're in the market, but they're very nervously in the market. And that's just, you know, another sign of, you know, the, the, their skepticism.